Good morning, my dear friends. I started investing in the Genomic Revolution ETF from ARK. ARK Invest. Uh, I've been sharing uh, Kathy Woods, her interviews uh, lately on Twitter. Uh, she runs ARK Invest, uh, started a company only four years back or so, and has launched several ETFs, managed ETFs, um, around different uh, teams. Uh, one of them is, um, uh, well, industrial innovation, and, and part of that you have like 3D printers and 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 and, and uh, companies like Tesla and others. But I'm already investing in in, in Tesla. Um, and you also have uh, some others like Web 2.0, um, but and you also have like um, the 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 fintech sector an ETF for it. Uh, but 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 I really like the one um, the Genomic Revolution ETF. I don't know anything about medicine, um, but um, what I do know is that the best portfolio you can build is a portfolio that consists of different great investments but that are not correlated uh, from 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 a, just an odds perspective if you have different great investments that have very good risk reward ratios but they are not correlated well if one works out you will do well uh, if all these investments have like a, a 100x potential or let's say a 10x potential then you have 10 10 different investments well only two need to work out for you to double your money um, of course the problem with this strategy is it's so hard to find different uh, great uh, opportunities because every opportunity really like there are lots of opportunities in the world but you have to find them and for that it needs study and uh, also continued management and follow-up and um, and, and, and it, but it's very very hard to find investments that are not correlated like in the crypto sector for example yeah you have so many opportunities but they are very very correlated with each other if there's a bull market everything goes up if the bear market everything goes down and it doesn't matter whether it's like um like it's not it's very rare to have investments not, not correlated but it does exist even in crypto for example binance uh, coined it very well uh, even though there was a bear market but it's very rare and very hard to know in advance uh, what a beautiful bird here you see the bird so um, I really like uh, about this um, genomic revolution ETF that is focused on a, a sector um, that uh, and I take Katie Woods, her word for it, um, that um, that is, uh, yeah, uh, can can disrupt uh, many things. Uh, like there have been made some big progresses. Uh, uh, this genomic um, uh, genomics means that uh, they are able to uh, basically. Um, edit the genome uh, that is the complete informa DNA information of a person uh, and they are really uh, able to um, um, edit it and, 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 and manipulate it so that the source of many diseases can be um, uh, attacked um, or addressed. Uh, uh, what she shared about it is that it was a hype during the internet bubble in the 90s um, uh, there were some big breakthroughs there um, uh, but um, it didn't pan out like in the in in, in the early uh, in the 2000s and uh, and even 2010 um, uh, there were no really uh, companies that um, were uh, really able to uh, uh, build um, or, 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 or create um, um, medications or, 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 or treat diseases um, 
big diseases uh, and make big progress they are using this new technology but um, but that's changing um, many companies are doing um, trials and um, and are getting uh, towards a point where um, they have actually real results uh, that um, will um, will produce uh, very valuable treatments um, I haven't researched this in depth um, but I'm looking at the track record here I'm using trust here um, I'm trusting Catherine uh, Woods uh, in her opinion that it the time may be right for this sector to explode um, many people say that oh like even if they will find breakthroughs then still it's not it's forbidden by the US government and so it's very unlikely these companies will make any money uh, anytime soon um, but I mean that's always the case with a new technology <laughs> Uh, it's always forbidden by the government. The internet was forbidden until 1990 to be used by uh, uh, people. Uh, it was uh, out outlawed. Um, you could be uh, jailed for it. How crazy that may sound. Uh, the same is true about cryptocurrency. Uh, it was absolutely forbidden to launch your own currency and you could be jailed for it and people were jailed for it. Uh, even in the early 2000s, uh, people lost their lives uh, launching um, uh, currencies. So, uh, the, I mean, but when there are breakthroughs, um, uh, then and, and people start to use it, then usually the legislation follows, and uh, they it's still illegal. But since so many people start doing it, it's being legalized, uh, and it will be uh, approved of it. But it's 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 before that that the biggest profits are to be made when it's still in a gray zone. So, so I'm not concerned about that. Uh, if you look at the performance of these different uh, companies in that uh, ETF, you see that yes, there are a few that did very well, many though not. Uh, there are a lot of young companies uh, only like trading for three years or so in the stock market. Um, market caps are um, yeah, uh, not high. Um, some have gone up, some have gone down. So, so I like that. I like that. Um, uh, I, I don't like to buy hyped stuff, and I like to buy something that has potential but has not been going up yet. What you do see uh, at the performance of this ETF is that um, it is correlated to the stock market. Um, if the stock market does well, this fund does well. If the stock market is poorly, this fund also goes down. But it's with a um, with leverage in that uh, the stock has gone up a lot more than the sorry the the ETF has gone up a lot more than the stock market. So uh, it's a much better investment than an index. And this is also um, something I really love to hear from Catherine Woods is is her opinion on yeah active funds versus or active management versus passive management I strongly agree with her opinion that um, this is uh, the, the, the the glorification of uh, passive investing has really caused a uh, massive misallocation of capital in the public markets um, 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 it's it's unbelievable how people um, uh, 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 how most investors um, retail investors and institutional investors believe that passive investing is the is the wise thing to do um, because uh, it's it's just not like it comes from this idea that Bogle uh, started uh, promoting that active managers uh, don't do a good job and, and, and are not even able to outperform um, indexes and there is, of course, uh, great truth to that, uh, that 8 uh, in 10 money managers suck and you can better invest it in an ETF. But this is true for all sectors, uh, sorry, in an index. Uh, 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 but this is true for all sectors. 
that eight in ten professionals don't do a good job, uh, and 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 the two in ten uh, do a much better job. Huh? But um, the 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 wrong conclusion here is that. Um, uh, therefore, index investing is a much better solution. That's not true because it doesn't account for real inflation. If you account for real inflation, which is 5% for the US dollar, and that's an underestimation in my opinion, it's actually 6%, but okay, I can, I can, fi I can find agreement with 5%. Uh, if you do that, uh, you deduct 5% and then you also deduct taxes, uh, and transaction costs of buying and selling those um, uh, passive in investment funds, index funds, uh, and in, uh, and taxes when you make a profit. Many countries uh, also charge capital gain taxes. There is nothing left, and there is no profit. Uh, you don't. Maybe you you make like six seven percent with a, a passive investment fund on average, and uh, well, you deduct five percent plus some taxes and plus some uh, costs, transaction costs and well, uh, <laughs> there is no money being made there. The only thing that happens is that the purchasing power of your capital remains intact, but that's only when you don't make mistakes of buying high and selling low, which most investors also do even with passive investment funds. So, um, uh, but but the, the, but the, 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 the big problem here is that you don't make money. Um, and that is the objective of investing. It's not to keep the purchasing power of your money. It's to see it go up in value, in real value, inflation adjusted value. And uh, that's not the case. So, so most investors, retail and institutional are wasting their money in uh, passive investment funds, in my opinion. Um, and also causing a massive misallocation of capital because what do these funds do? They just put money in the biggest um, companies hmm? or, um, in a certain sector or the big, biggest bonds without any uh, critical analysis whether these are good risk reward ratio investments. It's just basically if you're big, then now you're like even bigger. That's it. That's the only thing this, the, 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 the passive investment uh, funds do. Um, but also if you're small, you don't get any money because uh, you're not um, uh, that there is very little capital chasing opportunities uh, and and so there are very few uh, active managers um, um, uh, investing in in, 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 in in companies that are not part of some kind of index anywhere um, and so companies that are overvalued, they get even more overvalued because they go high in, 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 in market cap and get uh, adopted into uh, indexes and, uh, and, and, and therefore get even more overvalued because now lots of people buy it simply because it's in an index. And companies that are undervalued and um, uh, don't get into an index and remain undervalued uh, even more because, well, no capital goes to it. So this this causes massive uh, misallocation of capital, meaning some companies are highly overvalued, other companies are highly undervalued. Uh, that's the situation today. Huh? Um, yeah, uh, passive investment funds have actually uh, caused um, the public markets to be um, yeah even even less uh, efficient uh, than uh, than they already were before the invention of it. So, um, there are great opportunities in the public markets uh, if you do active management, active investing. But of course, you need to really be very critical of the performance of an active fund manager uh, because, um, uh, yes, it's true, 8 and 10 really suck uh, and you, 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 you better put an index fund. Uh, so, what's the past performance of uh, Catherine Wood with ARK Invest? Uh, very good, uh, uh, somewhere around 20% per year or so for her, their main ARK innovation fund. But then they have these smaller funds and there it depends. Uh, but for example, the fund that uh, I'm investing in here in the Genomic Revolution ETF uh, has about 11% per year since inception. That's about four years uh, ago. 
four or five years ago. 11% is that good? Mm, no, but it does uh, uh, achieve the minimum threshold of uh, seven, eight percent that you want to see from an active fund manager because um, if they can't even achieve seven, eight percent, then they are really not good and not worth your money. Uh, because you can just better put in an ETF uh, in an index fund. So, uh, but if they do more than that, uh, that's good. And especially if uh, they have proven in other situations to do a lot more than that, like Catherine Woods, she, for example, invested in Bitcoin around 2015, 2016 uh, with her fund. They only bought 1% because it was an ETF. You can't really. You don't. The problem with these ETFs is you can like not in, only invest in 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 in, uh, in things that are uh, quoted on the public markets and and, and, and at the time um, she didn't have uh, well there was only one uh, fund that could be bought uh, that held Bitcoin but even that was I think not straightforward for an ETF to invest in uh, but she did it. Uh, one percent, uh, around two hundred dollars, and 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 then uh, Bitcoin went up, uh, and they just kept it. It it went to an allocation of ten percent, um, around uh, the top of fifteen uh, fifteen thousand dollars, I, I estimate, uh, where they really had to uh, cut it uh, back uh, because of um, because they were not compliant with regulations anymore because. Uh, Bitcoin was also forking into Bitcoin Cash and others, and, and so they couldn't, like, th these were not eligible investments uh, uh, that they could, uh, and, and so they, they couldn't sell it without getting into trouble. So they really need to cut it back. But also, she never said it, Catherine, uh, but I, I, I have this impression she really knows, yeah, when she, she, she's in touch with, 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 with markets when something is overvalued and undervalued she, she does that well I think um, and I think um, she timed that well there to, to bring down that 10% exposure of Bitcoin in the ARK Innovation Fund uh, back to only 1% uh, close to the top I think that's a, a great performance uh, but um, yeah she did she, she did many other things uh, with that fund that's now uh, four years old and and and, and and has a good track record. I, I would have to look it up how much it is. I, I think it's around 20% or so, or maybe more. Let me check. Yeah, so the ARK Innovation ETF, the main ETF that they have, uh, did 23% per year since inception and it's since 2015. 23% um, per year is very good. The limitation of such a fund is it cannot have an exposure higher than 10% uh, in any investment. So it's, it is highly diversified. Uh, but that also limits the amount of profit you can make. Even when you see an opportunity, you can't uh, invest. Um, well, you're never going to invest 10% of your portfolio into it because that's the maximum allowed exposure. Uh, so usually they invest only a few percent in it and then it grows to 10% and they need to start cutting back. Um, those are limitations of ETFs. That's a problem uh, for for someone who, who who sees great opportunities in markets, and and as crypto investors, we know that money is made by investing big and then holding and not selling. Uh, so you have exposures of 50% plus in, in one asset. That's how you can make a lot of money. So this 23% may look like peanuts compared to what you can achieve in crypto, and that's true. But um, you also have to take into account that. Uh, the, uh, an ETF is much more limited in what it can invest in, uh, but also, um, well, the, the flip side here is that you can use uh, margin or, or uh, leverage on these kind of ETFs. So even though it may only have like 20% per year, uh, you actually only need, in, for many brokerages, you only need 50% um, uh, margin. Uh, so, so if you invest in that, actually, the, the, the broker will borrow you 85%. Uh, a margin loan uh, for such uh, an investment uh, and so you only need to put down 15% of the investment uh, in, in, in own equity that that's amazing uh, that means that yeah well if you use leverage uh, your return is not 20% per year it's um, it's a lot higher huh? uh, so that's how you well that 
that's something you don't have in crypto or you do have it but it's just way too risky to use it it's way too volatile um, a crypto to use an instrument like that but in the traditional capital markets you can do that so 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 I invested um, about 50% of my portfolio which used to be cash waiting to buy crypto cheap um, I invested in Tesla and then I also uh, used leverage and, and a margin loan to invest double as much it's actually it was about 2.3 times uh, the amount um, and so I have uh, like I started with a, a Tesla position of around uh, 2x um, leverage uh, Tesla has been going up uh, it's now around um, my average buying price is 210 it's now around 230 so because it's go, been going up I can uh, invest more uh, even though I don't have to sell anything I just get more uh, because my equity goes up um, I can also I have also more um, if your investment goes up in value you 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 you, you get more um, um excess uh, margin excess uh, uh, capital that you uh, now can use to in, uh, you can borrow more from your broker basically uh, because the value of your account has gone up your equity has gone up but your margin loan stays fixed and uh, your broker has a certain amount of um, leverage that they allow to you um, in my case around 35 percent or so but it depends what products you buy but since it's mainly um, Tesla there is about a 35 percent margin requirement there for my for my account and so uh, but as as the value of Tesla goes up um, I have excess um, like for example when I invest for with a leverage of 2x or 2.3x uh, I have about a margin um, I have a margin requirement of about 35% but actually uh, the amount of equity I have in the account compared to the total value of the account is about 40 or 42 percent or so so I have about 7 percent excess um, that I could also invest um, but you want to keep a buffer there because the moment you hit your uh, margin requirement of 35 percent it starts liquidating so you always need to be higher than that um, but as Tesla goes up suddenly like my my my, my actual um, margin is um, about uh, 42 percent and if Tesla would go up from 230 to 250 well I, I will have maybe about 50 percent margin but I can go down to 35 percent that means that I do get uh, to invest more in other invest or in the same or other investments uh, I, I'm able to loan more or borrow more, more money uh, from my broker and I think it's very wise to to do that uh, at this stage in uh, in time um, just in general always it's I think a good idea to borrow money at four percent if your average returns are uh, considerably higher as an investor so that's a good idea um, and especially if you see an opportunity anywhere and I think that uh, yes I see an opportunity in Tesla um, a great opportunity but I also need to um, I also like to invest in other opportunities especially since yeah there is a, a high risk here since since I do use leverage like right now for example with the amount of margin loan I have the moment uh, my, my liquidation price is around uh, around two hundred dollars that if, if Tesla drops below two hundred dollars I will have to start uh, it will automatically start selling off uh, Tesla shares uh, to make sure that uh, my mar margin requirement is fulfilled and it will uh, sell those Tesla shares and bring down my margin loan but um, uh, I, so I need to protect against that and of course it's 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 it's, it's risky to continue to buy the same asset Tesla in my case uh, as it goes up uh, as you get more money to spend uh, from your broker uh, if you invest this all in the same asset 
if things turn around uh, because your liquid liquidation price also always goes up if i buy more tesla then my liquidation price goes up from say 200 to 210 dollars huh? so so uh, i'm willing to do that but only like with a, a big lag huh? and so now it's 230 yes if it goes to 250 i was thinking like what should i buy do i want to buy more tesla I, I i do agree that tesla is highly undervalued uh still uh, at current prices and, and and i would say like the average price the past five years was 266 dollars uh, i checked that out uh, the past five years um i would say anything below that is seriously undervalued since it's so likely we will do it at 10x uh, the coming year or two years um and even 300 dollars and 350 dollars and even 400 dollars will look highly highly undervalued uh, today looking back on it but um, of course sideways movements can continue uh, to happen and, and that's very bad if you lose leverage so uh, there is a risk here uh, that um, that it doesn't uh, go up uh, and it's for, it's gonna test the bottom of 180 dollars or find a, a new bottom of 150 dollars this is a small chance for that to happen i think and in my case i would make uh, big losses uh, since i'm leveraged up uh, 2.3 x or so so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a defense there, um, and, and I think I found one with this uh, Genomic uh, Revolution ETF. Um, so instead of buying more ETF uh, as the price goes up, I'm, I'm just going to uh, invest in something else, this, this ETF, um, that I believe may actually uh, save my portfolio in case uh, Tesla goes wrong. So, um, it's a small chance, uh, uh, but like, of course, if Tesla does not go up from here, I can't buy anything. So then if Tesla goes down from here, well, I, I can't buy anything and, and this strategy will not work. But if Tesla first goes up, um, let's say to, to 250, 260 and maybe $300, uh, well, that will allow, allow me to buy a, a lot of this uh, Genomic Revolution ETF. Uh, and let's say after that it goes wrong and um, Tesla goes sideways or down or tests the bottom of 180 or goes down to a new bottom of 150 uh, against my expectations, eh, a low probability, but it may happen. But I do have that Genomic Revolution ETF. There is a chance that um this one goes up uh and um and saves the portfolio um and, 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 and even though tesla goes down to below the 200 dollars um or whatever price it is that i have my liquidation price uh, thanks to this uh, genomic revolution etf going up uh, actually i'm not getting liquidated um so that's what i will try to uh, achieve um, of course, um, both can also go uh, down. Uh, I, I mean, this genom genomic revolution ETF may be a, a bad investment also and go down and make things worse. That's possible too. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, and, and of course, I, I, I really do believe Tesla is the best investment here. If you look at past performance of past, past five years, Tesla did 0%. And this genomic revolution ETF did 100%. And so it doubled in the past five years. So uh, that's not as good an investment, uh, I believe, uh, as, 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 as Tesla. Uh, not nearly. Um, but yeah, having like 20-30% um, compared to my Tesla investment, uh, uh, also in this genomic revolution ETF, may make, make a big difference in case uh, Tesla goes wrong. And I do have like 20, 30% of what I invest in Tesla also in this genomic revolution uh, ETF, then uh, there's a chance that it saves uh, my portfolio. So that's it, guys. That was a long one. I hope you enjoyed it and um, have a great day.